Hi everyone, uh, today's case is an interesting one, an iPhone 10 that was uh, damaged from falling or hitting the wall or in, in this case it was uh, caused the damage to the baseband uh, board and Wi-Fi, um, Bluetooth and eventually it, it, it started a short circuit on the board. Um, and it was in between the layers, the short circuit was in between the layers so the only solution was to swap the board and move the mm, uh, three components which was the Wi-Fi uh, chip and the baseband CPU and the EEPROM. Now the EEPROM and Wi-Fi you could have reprogrammed it and but the baseband CPU had to uh, swap it anyways. So here now I've uh, removed the three components from the original board and started uh, uh, resoldering them back to uh, the donor board. As you can see now, uh, uh, the Wi-Fi chip is back in place and uh, with the help of you know uh, heat proper heat settings uh, fold back into place uh, next step was to put back the EEPROM uh, now as I explained you wouldn't need to do so on uh, if you have a programmer EEPROM programmer but since I didn't have it I had to remove the EEPROM from the original board and resolder it to uh, the donor board uh, I'm trying to keep some flux on 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 um, on the board where the pads are and then apply some solder to it in preparation for resoldering the EEPROM you have to be really careful because uh, the EEPROM is delicate is cla glass uh, IC and very tiny you could easily lose it or uh, damage it It's right in the corner, so it's very difficult to get the right angle and put back the EEPROM. At some, at some point, I think I had used uh, the airflow was so high that it blew, blew off and I had to look for it for like 10 minutes until I found it. But it's essential if you don't have the EEPROM, uh, it will not boot up. I will eventually buy a programmer for EEPROM, uh, which you need to have an EEPROM programmer for uh, the assortment of iPhones. As you can see, I'm turning the board to get the right angle. For and the airflow should come from the left, I think. Yeah. Nah, I the airflow was high. I think I blew off again. <laughs> blew it off somewhere, and eventually I found it.
I suggest to have it at an airflow of like maximum 30 percent or you know, um, heat setting should be a bit higher to compensate for the uh, low airflow. really difficult to control because it's right in the corner and it's and I try not to squeeze or hold hold the the EEPROM because uh, you can crack it easily Yeah, I think at that point I, I lost it now. And then I found it again and uh, tried to put it back again. In this video, I, I did not show how. I desoldered those compounds, three components. But you know, there's a special technique for uh, CPU and the Wi-Fi, uh, how to desolder them safely uh, without ripping the pads. Here's the second attempt of desoldering the EEPROM. Yeah, I had to redo the pads because I had two, uh, one pad had too much solder on it, so it was uneven. Finally. By the way, I use a Sunshine SST twelve A um, 
uh, bottom heater uh, to split the board and put them back together. Once again, just remember to have very low air airflow when you're putting back the heat pump. Slightly off the pads with the help of flux and reapplying the heat, it will eventually fall back in place. I have to keep changing the angle and now I think this is like the proper angle but not for the camera <laughs> um, and it's out of focus the camera is out of focus but uh, the actual microscope is in focus let's put back now as you can see it's aligned properly uh, now we'll tackle uh, the BBCPU, I think, yeah, it's the last one. As you can see, there was one pad that was torn, so I had to do a jumper. Um, the other ones that are missing are NCs, not connected pads, so... just need to put a little bit of flux, not too much, otherwise we'll uh, float and we don't want the IC to float too much, you know. And you need to use a, a big nozzle on your uh, hot air. Uh, I use a quick eight six one DW. As you can see now, I'm trying to, trying to realign it uh, as best as I can uh, before applying the uh, hot air. It's good to have visual references, like see the edges where they're supposed to be aligned uh, with the components around the IC. If not, then you need to put kind of markers by scratching uh, the corner, two corners, opposite corners, with a very sharp blade. But in this case, I have a lot of visual references. So you don't need to scratch the board. I use like fifty percent airflow. Um, once you see the flux bubbling out on the sides, 
then you know that it's uh, the right temperature and start it started to melt. And I and I then kind of like touch the IC on one of the corners. Wiggle a little bit. Just to make sure it's falling in place properly. That's it. After putting back those three components, uh, Resolder the two parts back together, installed it, and it worked uh, perfectly fine. You have to trust me on that.